I have a great video for you today for, for those who are interested in learning more about dip pens, uh, particularly how to use them without becoming frustrated. Some of the tips and tricks I've learned over time. There's something of a learning curve involved with, with using dip pens, especially in today's modern culture uh, where um, I'll just say it's not really a dip pen friendly world that we live in when it comes especially to paper. Uh, but uh, I've got the outline here for for you to see. I'll just try to stick with this and keep my thoughts organized so I can keep this video as brief as possible and still be thorough. I've broken it down into uh, several sections, the first being the pen holder and what uh, you might want to, to consider when purchasing a pen holder. There's a lot of different grip styles uh, that you can find out there. Uh, you have a style such as, as this. Uh, which is kind of a, a straight uh, straight grip section. You also have profiled dip section or grip sections like this one here. I think it's just really a matter of preference. Uh, the probably the more common one that you can find in today's uh, stores is is this, particularly this uh, speedball version of it. Uh, they're perfectly adequate. They fit most people's hands just fine. Uh, you might want to buy one of each and give them a try they're not exactly expensive also I've got listed the thickness of the grip as something to, for you to consider here's two straight grip sections uh, one clearly is uh, thicker than the other and so just depending on how big your fingers are uh, you might prefer one over the other so again, experimentation is probably your best uh, option there to try to figure out which one you prefer. Another thing to consider is the size of uh, the ferrule. The ferrule is this part of the pen that holds the nib uh, into, the, into the pen holder. Uh, I just realized I've got to grab another nib from up here that I'm going to want to use to explain this. Okay, some nibs are what I will call the standard size, which is all of these that you can see here. Occasionally you'll run into one that has a really large, uh, a really large uh, profile to the, to the bend here, and that's actually not the one I was looking for. An example of that might be something like the probate nib, which honestly I don't know if I can get out of here because I've crammed it in there so tight. Yeah, it'll come. As you can see, this nib has been stuck into this pen holder that doesn't really fit because I don't have one to fit it well. Uh, and you know, I want to consider that when picking your nib and your pen combinations. So if you're going to use one of these that has a really wide uh, wide body to it you'll want to get a larger uh, a pen that will accommodate a larger uh, nib like this and that's the the ferrule size I don't know what they really call them I call it standard and large I I, I have no idea um, my recommendation to you uh, when trying to find a, a pen to, to use on a regular basis would probably be this black uh, speedball uh, calligraphy pen. You can get these in pen sets from craft stores to Walmart. They'll come with this pen and several calligraphy nibs, which I really won't talk about today, uh, but the, they will hold the same size. The one thing to consider is that there is another type of nib called a crow quill nib that looks like this. They're very small, they're tubular as you can see, and they fit uh, in a totally different size pen. So just be conscientious of that. All right, let's talk about nibs. There are a number of different types of nibs available for uh, purchase. I'm gonna break them down into uh, five different basic categories. One would be the italic uh, 
relief and stub. Uh, I guess that's one category, so we're really looking at three here. Um, the italic uh, relief and stub nibs would be like this Jackson. These are a nib that are wider in one dimension and narrow in, narrower in the other. They're designed to uh, to do italic writing. Uh, some uh, the type of writing that has um, line variation and width to it uh, just in the depending on the direction that the nib is traveling and you'll see this at the end when we do some uh, writing. Um, you might also have what are called lettering nibs. Uh, I didn't put an example of those up here but uh, these are the nibs you might see in the speedball calligraphy set. They're uh, generally designed for um, exactly that. Lettering and calligraphy, you don't really use them for day-to-day -day correspondence. Um, and then specialty nibs, these might be music nibs or a broad placard nibs or something along that line uh, that uh, just nibs that are designed to do a, a very specific purpose. Maybe one day I'll do a, a review on, on some of those as well. I have some old vintage lettering nibs from Master Brook and I have uh, a rather large placard nib might be interesting to see those used one of these days. Another thing to consider is the width of the nib. You'll notice uh, a nib like this, uh, the Jackson stub will, as I said, this is an italic or a stub nib and so you're going to find uh, the nib to be wider in one dimension and narrower in the other uh, versus something like the Falcon 48 here which is a pointed nib, and then one that's in the middle, uh, the Esterbrook 788 oval, which is really kind of more like what we would think of as a ballpoint or a rollerball nib. It's got a turned up edge on the nib and creates more of a round uh, line that doesn't have a lot of variation to it. Um, Another thing uh, to consider is the size of the furrow, which we already mentioned, so we'll skip that. And then we have this uh, flexing or rigid. So really what I'm talking about when I talk about flexing or rigid, and again you'll see this in the writing samples uh, at the end, here are two nibs. Both of them are pointed, so both of them are going to create a very fine line. However, you'll notice with this nib, as I press down, the tines, which are the points of the nib, open right up. So this nib can create a very fine line or a very broad line depending on whether or not I'm pushing down. And as you write with the nib, you'll notice that strokes in one direction, namely the draw stroke, will tend to flare the tines open. And the more pressure I put on them, the more flare you will get. And this is what we call flex. And so this uh, this provides character uh, to your to your writing. The the letters will have variation uh, to them as you go. This is the Esterbrook 555 accountant nib. It's designed for posting, and while it does have some flex, I really have to bear down quite a bit, and I don't think I really could uh, open this nib as much as this. So this is a much more rigid nib, designed to provide very thin. Uh, letters, uh, lines on the letters, I should say, uh, for you know, putting notes in an accounting book, for example. So you've got rigid or, or flex. Now what do we use dip pen nibs for? Uh, that would determine what really we're looking for when it comes to these other characteristics. The first I've listed there you can see is posting and bookkeeping. Uh, this would be um, you know, you, the the letters don't have a lot of character to them. The objective there is to just keep them small and fine. Uh, decorative writing, maybe calligraphy or something like that. You would want to use a calligraphy nib. Uh, correspondence, which is what I mainly use my nibs for. Your day-to-day -day letter writing or note-taking or journaling, something like that. Really, your preference in that case, any of these nibs are, are adequate for that. This is the nib that I use uh, more than any of them. It's a French nib. Um, uh, I'm not even really sure what the, the company is, but uh, I believe the nib is called Henry uh, Superfine. Uh, the, I'll have to do a review on this at one of these days. That's on my short list of nibs to review. So 
you'll just have to come up with your own preference about which nib you prefer uh, for the application. We also would have calligraphy and art. A lot of these crow quill nibs that I showed you earlier are used in, in art because um, they can get really, really fine lines with those. My recommendation to you in this section would be these three that uh, nibs that I've got up here. The Esterbrook 048 is a fantastic everyday nib. It's a fine pointed nib. Again, you'll see writing samples from all three of these at the end. It's a fine pointed nib. It offers you moderate uh, to slightly better than moderate flex. The oval point, this is probably the easiest of these three nibs to use. It's a great one to start with. And the Jackson Stub, Esterbrook uh, 442, which is um, mainly a correspondence nib. It offers you some metallic writing and a uh, moderate amount of flex. All right, let's. These are all Esterbrook nibs, by the way. Uh, there are other brands. Uh, Spencerian uh, made a lot of nibs. Hunt made a lot of nibs. Um, I'm, I mentioned these three because they're pretty readily available. Spencerian and Hunt and Esterbrook are probably the most prolific pen makers of the day. Um, any of these you can get on eBay um, any day of the week. They're all over the place, so that's really why I selected those. Let's talk about ink. Ink uh, comes in several types. What I'm going to call pigment and India ink is if you're a calligrapher, uh, that'd be what you're used to, to using, um, you know, a speedball ink or something like that. Uh, a pigment ink is one that has its color because of fine particulates of uh, pigment ground and uh, suspended in solution in the ink. These can work fine. Um, I wouldn't use them in a fountain pen, but you can use them with a dip pen. My preference, however, is uh, dye-based inks. And that really is for several reasons. Their availability and uh, the quality of the ink. There's a lot of opportunity um, for different uh, um, properties and colors. I mean, there's just a huge amount of ink available. You'll want to consider the color you want to use. Some colors would be more appropriate for formal writing and others are more, we'll use the word whimsical or, or whatever. Uh, some of the properties you want to consider. Flow. This is how well the ink transfers from the nib to the paper. Some inks just don't flow very well in dip pens. The The reservoir here will be full of ink and that just hangs up and doesn't flow to the paper very well and others are almost a little too much and, and you end up with really heavy writing and you lose the definition in the line. Uh, l some inks are lubricated. An example of that might be this one here, the Noodler's um, uh, Blue Eel is a, a lubricated ink. I really do like that ink in dip pens. Drying time, some inks dry faster than others. Feathering, oh, feathering is a, a, a bad thing. We'll talk about that when you see the writing samples, but some inks feather more than others. And bleed through is another thing we generally want to avoid with inks. And again, you'll see some examples of that in the writing samples. Availability may be a major influencer in your uh, selections. Uh, some of the inks that I will recommend, I, I chose inks that are readily available. Uh, you can get some of them from Staples, uh, really just one. Uh, this ink, Parker uh, Black Permanent Quink ink, is a fantastic ink for dip pens. Very well behaved with all those properties. Uh, Goulet Pens uh, sells inks of all types, and you can order from Goulet Pens samples. Samples of ink come in these little vials like this. They're about three, mil, three milliliters a piece and uh, vary in price, but they're fairly inexpensive. And um, choosing uh, to order some ink samples at first will help you to choose the right ink for yourself. Um, the other place I've bought ink from regularly is a website called iSellPens.com. Goulet Pens is also a, a website. I'm, I think it's GouletPens.com. I don't remember, but you can Google that and find it real easy. Um, I happen to notice that iSellPens.com right now has 
a bunch of their ink samples on clearance, so you can get a really good deal on those at the moment. Uh, I don't, of course don't know how long that'll last, but any of those places I've bought ink from and would highly recommend any of those sellers. My recommendations to you for dip pens, because these are the most well-behaved of all of the readily available inks that I've used, is Waterman's uh, Serenity Blue. This used to be Florida Blue. That's a good blue ink for you. A black ink, Parker Quink, maybe one of the best behaved dip pen inks. And then, surprisingly, this one. It's a Chinese ink called Hero, Blue Black. Uh, it's really inexpensive. I think I paid $5 for this bottle. It has something of a chemically smell to it, so I wouldn't put it in any kind of vintage fountain pens or anything like that, though it's, they, it's what they sell it for, but I'd just be a little careful with that. I buy this from an eBay member called Million Share. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, I just I bought from them many times and have been happy with the product that they provide. Okay, let's talk about paper. Paper provides a great challenge for fountain pen and particularly dip pen users. Uh, one of the big challenges that you uh, tend to find is what's called uh, feathering or bleed through. Uh, there's, uh, let me just maybe use this blue eel to, to give you an example of that. Feathering and bleed through is when the ink passes through the fibers of the paper uh, like straws and you get all this nastiness going on here. I mean you lose all your definition and your character and your lines and it's just horrendous. Bleed through is obviously that. Sorry, there you go. That second half of that page is totally unusable. Um, so you want to find inks that minimize that. Uh, the paper is going to be a major contributor there but some inks are better than others at minimizing that. And the same, the inks that are good for fountain pens may not necessarily be good for dip pens. Um, the reason why is is this section. A lot of dip pens have, uh, they're made of steel, and especially the sharper uh, nibs uh, tend to cut the fibers of the paper as you're writing with them, especially on the pushing strokes. And when you have the cut fiber, it tends to feather and bleed more than more than normal. And so they just provide a particular challenge uh, that you don't get as much with fountain pens. You also tend to have heavier ink uh, lay down with dip pens uh, than you do fountain pens. So there are three papers that I would recommend. Staples, 28-pound uh, paper uh, from, obviously, Staples, uh, 1350 a ream. There's the item number that you can see. You can pause that and zoom in. But it looks like this uh, in the store. And there's the item number. Uh, really, that's a paper I use a great deal for fountain pens, but uh, it's an okay paper for dip pens. There's the uh, Staples Sugarcane Pads. This is a paper made out of sugarcane. Again, this is kind of a carryover from my fountain pen using, but there you go. There's what that paper looks like. And it's lined, just a legal pad. Uh, they work well. The... Um, price and item number there. 10 pad pack is $18 and the item number. HP makes a 32 pound copy paper which works well for fountain pens and it makes a decent um, dip pen paper depending on the nib and Staples makes a 28 pound uh, copy paper. Here again is the prices and the item numbers for those. And then the last one is a paper called SN2 paper. This is actually a paper I've started to produce. I found this after years of trying to find a good paper. It's hands down the best dip pen paper I've ever found and you know, I'll show you a sample of this as well and you can just you can order that directly through me if you choose to use that. Um, so let's let's bring all of this together now. Uh, we're gonna do uh, writing with three different nibs, three different inks on four different papers just to give you an idea of um, the differences between these. So let's start with um, the two copy papers. These are probably the most economical uh, versions that you can purchase. We'll start with the 32 pound paper. The three pens that we're going to use are the Falcon 48, the 788 uh, uh, Globe, and the Jackson Stub 442, the three that I showed you earlier. 
So let's start with the Waterman Florida Blue. Sorry, they now call this Serenity Blue, which I think is a really dumb name. And I'm going to be quick to try to keep this video short, so I'm just going to uh, briefly write the uh, pen, uh, the, the name. So this is the 048 uh, Falcon by Esterbrook. So I'll come back to this, but you can see there is going to be some feathering, which surprises you because this is actually one of the more uh, quality papers for uh, typical things like printing. The staples, 28 pound. Okay, and we'll come back to that. The um, the staple is sugarcane lined paper and the sustainable earth stuff. And I'll just tear a page of this out so we don't have to deal with the big pad. Need to get a little more ink on the nib. So th this little thing here is designed to kind of show you the, the flexiness of the nib. Okay, so there's that one. Now let's switch to, let's use black to kind of separate these colors out. This will be the Parker Quink. Falcon 48. here to the staples. You can see some feathering on that. Oops, sorry about that. And then these two. Feathering, feathering. The reason you're seeing some of that is because this nib is pretty sharp. It's the sharpest of the three. And um, it's scratching the page, as you can hear. Okay. And now the last ink will be the Hero Blue Black. you can see why paper has been such a frustrating thing for me and why when I found this other paper uh, which is not readily available that I decided to offer it because it um, it's hands down the best paper I've ever found for uh, dip pen users especially sharp uh, pens Okay, and then one more. I think the next time around I'm going to keep the same paper up and use the other two nibs. Okay, I think it'll save us a little time to do it that way. So I'll move that out of the way. Let's move to the Jackson stub. And we'll go in the same order of ink here. So we've got um, we've got the Jackson stub. And so what you can see here is line variation. That's a stub nib. Oops. 
caught the uh, edge of the nib. Too many papers, sorry guys. I think for the sake of time, I'm not going to show you all the different ink colors with all of these. You've seen all three ink colors there with the uh, the Falcon. And so we'll just, I just really want you to see the difference in the lines between these more than anything. Um, so I'll use that same Florida blue and we're now moving to the oval 788. You'll notice this one doesn't scratch or catch. It's because it's got that end that's turned up a little bit. And so it runs more like a ballpoint than any of the others that we're using. Okay, so there's all three nibs. Uh, you'll notice that both the ink and the paper make a fairly significant difference in the quality of what you get. This 32 pound HP paper is a high quality paper by today's standards, but for dip pen users it's okay depending on what you're using. The oval and the Jackson are okay, but when you're using something sharp um, you get a lot of feathering. The uh, bleed through is not real great. You know, this you could use one side of the page, but it's a whole lot better than copy paper or a lot of others you might try. The 28 pound Staples paper, again, uh, kind of similar results. It's a little bit less costly. Honestly, there's not a huge difference uh, between these two papers with dip pens, and again, it's usable on one side. The um, Got a drip there. The Staples sugarcane paper, uh, fairly decent performer on uh, again everything but the sharp nibs, and usable on one side. But again, this is better. Uh, this is better than almost any other paper you're gonna try, especially copy papers and even some of the really expensive fountain pen papers. It's just Dip pens uh, create their own problem. And the um, uh, the SN2 paper uh, that I, uh, I have is fantastic. As you can see, all of this is no feathering, and the second side is uh, usable. Uh, this bright light doesn't make it look that way, but um, it many, many times I've used both, pa both sides of the paper. So, in summary, select carefully the pens you're using. If you're going to use a sharp nib especially, you need to have a very high quality paper. If you're going to use a rounder nib like an oval, uh, or if you're going to use a stub, uh, maybe you have a little bit more flexibility there. But paper quality is really, really important when it comes to dip pens. And when we talk about quality, we're not talking about the same type of thing that we're talking about when we are discussing the quality of say like a color uh, inkjet or laser jet paper. Um, we're not talking about thickness necessarily. We're talking about how well it holds the ink and whether or not it bleeds and feathers and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, so um, I'm going to do a proper review on this paper here before too much longer. I just need to take the time to film it. But um, 
thought I would show that in this um, video because I didn't think it would be real complete without it. Uh, I will, not to turn this into a commercial, but I will, um, if, if any of you are interested in getting into dip pens and you don't have any of these old vintage nibs and you want to order some paper from me, just let me know and we'll just increase the cost just a little bit to $11 and I'll throw in uh, the three nibs that we were talking about today uh, just to give you uh, so something to start with. I hope that this has been uh, helpful to you. Dip pens can be a whole lot of fun. I, it, I don't write a letter anymore with uh, with a regular nib. Uh, if I have the ability to take notes with a dip pen, I prefer to do that. There's just a lot of really fun things that you can do with dip pens that you can't with with any other pen. Uh, for example, this my favorite of nibs just has amazing flex. And it's just a lot of fun to write with. Your regular everyday writing just starts to look really attractive when you've got line variation and flex coming from from the paper. So that's really quick writing. Um, not trying to make that look super nice but you can see that the you can see the the variation in the line probably should have chose a better ink to show it that Parker Quink is better but um, it's just a lot of fun to use and uh, brings some real character to your writing and when you write a letter to somebody with that uh, especially if you take your time and make your handwriting look nice put it in a nice envelope seal it up even maybe just use a wax seal or something like that on it they really feel like they got something special and they did I mean you spent a lot of time writing it and and you used vintage materials and it's just something that uh, they're not going to get from anybody else maybe ever in their whole life so there's a lot of fun uh, a lot of fun in this hobby I hope this video was helpful especially for those of you who are just wanting to get started and uh, thank you for your attention and I hope you have a wonderful day